as well. Full Sports, Sinani, how you doing? Good, Moki. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm with majority of these guys on defense that's basically been in your system, and, and some of them, it's already no coach. Uh, I noticed on Sunday that Coach Frazier was dialing things up, and with that trust, it gives you, uh, you know, the confidence in your offense to go forward on fourth down. So more aggressive on defense. Would that be the identity of this new look, sir? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's game plan uh, every week. Uh, we, we do have a lot of trust in our players. Uh, they take great ownership, and I think it's a good dynamic there. Absolutely. And, uh, Coach, I had the opportunity to meet with uh, your strength and conditioning staff down at the Combine. They was front and center, front and row every day down there in Indy. Uh, they did an excellent job last year, I thought, of getting the team ready to play for you on game day. So what are some of the procedures that Eric and Hal are doing to, uh, in reference to getting Matt and Tremaine back to battle for you? Well, they're a piece of the puzzle, right? Um, you know, our, we do a great job. Our strength and conditioning coaches, uh, our sports science Department, our training staff do a great job of communicating so that everyone's on the same page with with each and every person, each and every player in this case is situation. So so that we can get them back as quickly as possible. Absolutely, Coach. I know you'd find a way. So uh, good luck to you. All right. Thanks, Mookie. Hey, Sean. Josh Reed here. I uh, hope you're having a good morning. The um, Ryan Fitzpatrick seems like he's been around the league for 60 years or so. Um, just keeps finding a way to get it done. Um, and when he gets hot, he can get as hot about as about as anybody in the league. How, how do you kind of prepare for a quarterback like Ryan? Well, he's super, uh, super talented, uh, you know, with tremendous ability, and he is. I mean, he's as good as there is out there. Um, and we have a lot of respect for Ryan. So, um, you know, it's, it's just uh, you, you got to prepare for a good Miami Dolphins football team on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, in particular, Ryan uh, does a great job, and then they've got – they've added pieces up front. They've uh, added pieces to the, to the weaponry, if you will, that he has at his disposal. Tight end does a really good job, you know, uh, long and everything. So uh, that was a really close game last week, and, and uh, we expect a very good challenge from a good uh, and well-coached Dolphins team. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Yeah, you too, Josh. Hey, Sean. Jay with the Buffalo News. How you doing? Um, good, Jay. What, uh, with this being your first road trip, I know you touched on it briefly on Monday, but just how different will things be in terms of precautions that this team uh, maybe will take and how different will it look uh, going on the road? Yeah, this is our first road trip. I mean, I'm so, I'm so uh, I guess, you know, just confident in, in our – and our ops staff, as I mentioned, I think last week or over the weekend or Monday, I can't remember at this point, the days are running together. But, yeah, our ops staff does a phenomenal job um, with the way they set up training camp. And I'm confident in this, in this uh, challenge as well that they're going to be out in front of it. And uh, we will be well prepared. Uh, we'll attack this thing head on and, and uh, make sure that we are ready to go for, for game time. Uh, in regards to uh, to Josh, what steps can you take uh, to work on ball security? Obviously, that's a bit of an issue coming out of Sunday's game. Uh, how do you, how do you improve that going forward? Well, it's a fundamental, right? And whether it's uh, a running back carrying the ball or or anyone, in this case, Josh carrying the ball, we've got to be better with our fundamentals. Uh, you know, ball security in this case, blocking, tackling, throwing, catching. Uh, so we've got a lot of work to do in that regard, and. Uh, and Josh, Josh takes ownership of it. He's aware of it, as, as you know. You've seen his his quotes. So uh, you know, appreciate his his workmanlike effort around that. Thanks. And then, could you just run through your injury report for us? <clears throat> yeah, I'll just give you the guys that uh, that you probably have questions on. So it's uh, I'm assuming Delshawn and and Matt and Tremaine, all of all of which are getting treatment, and and uh, you know we'll see where they go today. Delshawn and Delshawn and, and Matt are probably going to be out. Uh, you know, Tremaine. Uh, is a wait and see at this point. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for that, Sean. John Worrell here with the AP. Um, so you said, uh, I was just taking a note here, Delshawn and Matt will probably be out for this Sunday's game. Is that what for you're practice. That what you're, oh, for, for practice. practice. Okay. Yeah, for practice. That was for practice. Yeah. Those, gotcha. Those two, okay. Just want to for practice today. So no, no, uh, no ideas as far as, as Sunday yet on, on either of those three guys. Correct. Um, okay. Um, going back to Skursky's question, uh, Skursky's question about um, uh, about Josh. 
you saw how big of a weapon Cam Newton is and was, you know, in, in Carolina and was this past weekend against the same defense. Um, how, what, what did you take away from that, um, knowing that you're, you're facing the same, the same opponent? Well, I mean, you know, each week is a different week. Uh, I'm certainly aware of, of Cam's abilities. Um, and, you know, listen, we, we have um, uh, our approach to, to game planning, and, and obviously New England had their approach. Uh, what we're focused on is this week's game and, and our opponent this week. So, you know, we'll just see how, how uh, we match up against a very good defense. You know, they've added and put a lot of money into this defense and this football team. Um, you know, so it's, it'll be a big challenge for us, honestly, John. And you learned from what you saw in Carolina and from Donovan McNabb how important it is to, to have a running quarterback and the threat that he poses. So what's the balance in, in, in trying to find, you know, how to utilize him to an extent where you don't put him into harm's way or put the, balls in the, the ball into harm's way as well? Yeah, it's a balance, and you said it, right? It's, uh, it's what we're always trying to find with the, with the, bal the balance of, of, um, of our fundamentals and the ball security, which is involved in our fundamentals and, and running uh, for production, uh, and also keeping a, a good eye on how many is too many, right? So, but also um, how few is not enough, you know? So it's a, it's a delicate balance, John, to your point. Is there such a thing as too many is too many? And, and what might that number be in, in, in particular to, to Josh? I think every situation is different, you know, I, again, and, and I'll just focus on Josh, who's our quarterback. Um, so every, every situation is different. Every game is different. Um, every situation in the game is different, right, where we are in the game. So all things uh, that we must take into great consideration as we continue to, to move forward and grow as a football team, in this case with our quarterback. Thank you. Sure. Hey, Sean. Sal Mayer, Ron in Rochester. Good to see you. Good to see you, um, Sal. The, uh, the running game last week, I know it was games, game plan specific. You threw the ball a lot against that team, and they're good against the rush. But I, I would guess that you weren't overly pleased with the um, yards per carry for Devin and Zach combined. How do you, how do you get that straightened out um, against this opponent this week? Well, I think it's a mindset, right? And, and that's where it all starts. And playing well at the line of scrimmage uh, is important. As you know, we've talked about that uh, many times over. And, and that's, where, that's where it starts. Uh, we've got to play well up front on both sides of the ball. And then uh, when the holes are there, uh, the backs have to hit them. Uh, so it's, uh, it's never just one person or one position. It's, it's all of us, starting with me. And, and I've got to do a better job. And, and as it turned out, the touches ended up being dead even. I think it was nine and nine. I mean. First question, do you foresee that moving forward? And the second part of that would be, do you like where Zach is as a rookie with having so little practice time this year? Yeah, I mean, it's, there's a lot of positives with both, both of those situations uh, in Zach's uh, case as well there, as you mentioned. And uh, I thought he, did some, he made some good runs. He protected, protected well most of the day. And, and I thought he caught the ball well, as you saw in the touchdown catch. And, having a good feeling there um, in terms of the scramble situation. So a lot of positives early on uh, with a lot of work to be done yet. Thanks, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean, Thad Brown, good to see you. Good to see you, Thad. You talked about money in the defense for Miami and maybe no spot more so than a corner. And what kind of challenge are Howard and Jones, even the rookie, uh, a big, a, a, I'm not even going to try the name, don't worry about it. You know who I'm talking about. But uh, in terms of how much a challenge will they be and how much are you looking forward to your talented group of receivers going up against those guys? Well, they did a pretty good job of shutting down New England last week just in terms of uh, with, their, with their coverage and their personnel and, and their schemes. Um, you know, so they're a, they're a tough opponent. I mean, it was a you know, close game to the very end there. And um, so we see that on film. That, that's, uh, that'll be no surprise to us on Sunday in terms of their ability the amount of investment they've made on that side of the ball, in particular to your question. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to come up with a good week of practice and, and a good game plan and then execute at a high level um, when we go down there. I know that, you know, you as a coach have to be on top of everything, but when you get a chance to have a best-on-best -best situation, is there a little more excitement, something that, you know, you can't watch it, you can't focus on it, but something that, you know, you're looking forward to seeing? Yeah, I mean, you know, this the, the level of competition that they that they present to us um, in terms of uh, their skill level, um, you know.
you know, uh, and, and again, they went out and got the corners that they did uh, for a reason, right? And, and then got Shaq down there, and Shaq's a really good football player who we love and have a lot of respect for and appreciation for. Um, so, they, again, they're, they're a very good opponent, well coached. I think Brian does a great job, and, and their coordinators as well. So, Danny Crossman also, you know, so a lot of respect for those guys with the coaching staff, the players. Um, and it's going to be a tough, tough challenge for us. Thanks, John. Sure. Hey, Sean. Uh, you went four wide. You want the four wide receiver set more often on Sunday than you did in all of last season combined. And we heard from Brandon back in April that you guys want to be able to to throw the ball often if the game plan calls for it. How close do you think you are to that point after one week? I would just say that we're trying to do what it takes to win. Um, you know, philosophically, we, we believe in a certain philosophy. Uh, overall, game, game plan to game plan, um, you know, it will vary just based on uh, how we feel like is, is uh, and what we feel like is right for us that week based on who we have available to us and, uh, and the different schemes and things. So uh, without getting too, too, too into the weeds on it, Marcel, I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, we're going to do our best to put our players in the position to be successful whatever that entails and on a week to week basis in this case. Sure. And sure. just to. You're good. I can hear you. Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, just to, to follow up, you said you believe in a, in a certain philosophy. What exactly is that, that philosophy that you bring in game to game? Well, I'll just leave that uh, inside of our walls if that's okay. I understand you got a job to do and, and I do too, but I, I think we can both respect, uh, why, why I wouldn't want to put that out there. So. Got to ask, got to ask. Appreciate you. I got though. it. I got it. Sure. Likewise. Hey, Sean, Adam Benini. Uh, good to see you. I, you know, you had, were back a couple of weeks ago, kind of outspoken on the fan issue, the inconsistency across the NFL. As you prepare for this game, uh, where do you kind of stand on on that issue? I know it's control what you can control, right? But uh, have you given that any more thought, and and how does it factor in as you prepare? Yeah, no more thought, man. We're we're excited to go down there. Uh, we know they're going to have fans. We're excited about that. Um, you know, it's a great place to play, great environment. Um, you know, we're we're looking forward to uh, to the week of preparation and and uh, going against a, a really tough football team in the Dolphins. Does it affect competitive balance at all with a limited number, in your opinion? I don't think so. I, I really don't. I mean, listen, like I've said before, and, and, you, and you quoted it, uh, control what we can control, and, and that's where we are. That's where we are in the season, and, and uh, that's, the, that's the part I love week to week is the routine and, and uh, just really zeroing in on that is, is our preparation and, and what we control. Thank you, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean. Matt Fairburn here. Um, you had a lot of moving parts this offseason uh, up front uh, and with your your run defense, even on Sunday, having some linebackers going in and out. Um, but it was still a really strong performance from from the run defense. What worked when you went back and watched uh, that performance on tape? Yeah, I would just say, Matt, you know, it starts up front. You know, the guys uh, that uh, those de defensive linemen, um, you know, it starts with the mindset, just like I mentioned about the offense and the, and the offensive line. It starts with the mindset, and uh, you've got to be, you got to have that mindset every day of practice. Uh, you got to carry it with you into the game, and and uh, they're the tip of our spirit, both sides of the ball, and uh, and so uh, you know we go as they go, and and I think them playing with great fundamentals, great hands in terms of trying to defeat blocks, uh, that's a key. That's the start of it, at least, and you got to have that. What did you see from Justin Zimmer that, that made you want to uh, put him in the lineup and, and give him the snaps that you did? Yeah, he did a good job. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's the guy that uh, did some good things for us in camp. He was only here a couple of weeks. I mean, appreciate his approach to his, his craft, his job. Um, and so I, I think that was, that was good to see. Thanks, Sean. Sure. All right, we're going to transition into Miami's media now. Okay. Start with Cameron Wolf. 
Hey, Sean, how you doing, man? Uh, Cam Wolf out of ESPN. Uh, I, I know you mentioned earlier about Miami's finances. They spent this offseason and Shaq Lawson. I uh, wanted to get a view of how, you know, the familiarity with a guy like Shaq impacts the game plan on what you do and maybe what he knows about your guy's scheme. Yeah, Shaq is uh, hes one of my favorites, man. Just a guy that I loved being around for the couple of years, few years we were around each other here. Um, and I actually worked Shaq out when I was, uh, when he was at Clemson coming out. So got a little bit more history than just our time together here in Buffalo. Uh, just a guy that's a good football player. And, and uh, I can see why Miami did what they did in terms of going out to get him. And, and uh, you know, we couldn't be happier for, for Shaq and, and his situation. I could follow up there. I know he's a fiery guy, a vocal guy. Uh, how do you impact, uh, expect that to be on Sunday, you know, with, uh, with talking and just sort of the extra juice he may have facing you guys? Yeah, I'm sure he'll be ready to go, just like their team. As I said before, Brian Flores does a great job of having his team ready to go and, and uh, a lot of respect for what they do down there. Is that it? Uh, Coach, Armando. it's Ar okay. yeah. Coach, it's Armando Salguero, the Miami Herald. Um, you're obviously in year four of your rebuild, and I'm wondering what you think is the most important part of that process to getting a team to be where you're at, and where exactly are you in that process? Well, I, you know, we're in, we're in year four right now and week two is where we are in that process. Uh, Armando, with respect to your question, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's about people. Um, and, and I think we've, uh, listen, we've made our fair share of mistakes across, you know, along the way, and that's to be expected. And my hope is that I don't make the same mistake twice. But going back to what I said, it's about people. And we've got really good people uh, in this building, uh, really good people around us, supporting us in terms of our fans and, our community and, and Bill's fans across the across the world, really. So uh, we feel that, man, even though those fans can't be in the stands, at least uh, in our stadium. Um, but we just really appreciate everyone's support, and I think that, that's what really drives it. Uh, if, if I could follow up real quick, you, you made the playoffs two out of your first three years, and obviously I know that that's the goal again this year, uh, at least. So are you further ahead than what you thought you'd be at this point? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, look, at the end of the day, um, I'm focused on playing the Dolphins, and I, I'm not going to get into whether we're further ahead or further behind. And I just That's honestly my focus uh, when I wake up and, and when we go to bed, and uh, that and, and, and my football team here in Buffalo. Hey, Sean, I appreciate you uh, doing this. Good to see you, man. Uh, yeah, Josh sure. Tolentino from The Athletic. Um, I wanted to ask about uh, preparing for Miami's uh, running back uh, situation and just the group that they have. You mentioned the offseason additions, and obviously two of those guys were Matt Breida and Jordan Howard. But uh, last week it was actually Miles Gaskin who, who led the team in uh, carries and all that. Just how do you go about preparing for all three of those? Yeah, they're, they're a good, good core of running backs. Uh, each, of, each of them um, have their own abilities and – uh, you know, I think Coach Bailey does a really good job of, of rotating those guys, and um, and so you know, that's that's a good running 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 group right there that bring a lot to the table, and uh, it'll be a challenge for us on defense just to just to try and you know create a point of attack because uh, they're so powerful, so fast, and um, you know it's a good offensive line. Hi, Coach. Uh, Barry Jackson from the Miami Herald. Dolphins played a lot of rookies last week, as you saw. Brandon Jones, their young corner from Auburn, two offensive line starters, Raquan Davis. From watching tape, who among that group caught your eye and impressed you? Yeah, you kind of broke up there. You're talking about all the rookies across the board? That they yeah, their first-year players. Yeah, yeah. Who, who caught your eye? The two offensive line starters, two in their secondary as well, played a lot. Yeah, I would say all of them. Honestly, um, you know, there's quite a few players on that roster that, that um, um, I thought did a good job in the game and um, played at a high level and uh, looked like they've been in the league for a long time, honestly. So uh, that just adds to, to their roster and their team and who they have. And 
Um, again, another reason why we've got to have a good week of practice this week as we prepare up here. Hey, Sean, Mike Giardi, NFL Network. How are you? Good, Mike. How are you? Could you speak to the, the relationship that Brian Dayball and, and, and Josh have formed over these last few years and sort of just your view of it and the importance of it as, as this team moves forward? Yeah, they've formed a good relationship. Um, you know, like, like most young quarterbacks, they spend a lot of time together and, and offensive coordinators, you know, spend a lot of time together. Um, I think it's, it's developing in a very, into a very strong, in fact, is already a very strong relationship and a key relationship, that along with Josh's relationship with Ken Dorsey, uh, our, our quarterback coach there. So, um, and I think that's an interesting uh, dynamic there because of the humility that you have to have when you're, when two coaches work closely with one player, uh, in particular the quarterback position. So uh, that's been that's been fun to watch. Uh, and then just you know how they challenge each other. Hey, coming off a good game, hey, what do you do? How do you handle a good game? And challenging each other to to uh, you know the emotional maturity side of it and, and, and remaining humble and hungry in their approach. I think that's been that's been uh, fun to watch for me uh, as they've grown together. Um, as we move forward as a football team. So that's, uh, you know, again, a big, a big help to me. And, and um, I think they're, they're doing a good job. Thanks, Sean. Sure. All right, that's it for today. Thanks, Sean. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good week.